Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today we are going to build a preset in animation node which is called a distributing sphere. We have a distributed matrices node available. You can distribute in grid, mesh, spiral, mesh, and so on. But there is no option to distribute in a sphere. The general principle has been explained in my advanced plexus loop animation, but I'm going to make it more detailed into a functional preset. Just to say that this is a new preset, I haven't tested that enough. Maybe some function will be added or deleted in the future, but in general I think it works fine at this moment. So let's start. So let's firstly hit Ctrl A and search for distributed matrices. And then I'm going to search for group inputs for the preset build. And I'm going to take the XYZ into the first socket and the width, length, height into the second socket. I'm going to name resolution and the size for each. The reason I use a group input instead of the loop input is because each time I'm generating a single sub-program, they should be independent spherical, for, uh, spherical matrices that we used. And I'm also going to hit this Z so that I have, can have an kind of offset. So if you don't have this XYZ activated, then the, the center will not be at the world origin. And we're going to use the same strategy that we used in um, Advanced Plexus Loop Animation Tutorial. However, in the tutorial, I actively created a UV sphere to control the entire mask. But here I'm going to use a simpler method which is called points distance fourth. And I'm going to put the size into the size. Uh, here I think it's due to the difference between diameter and the radius. So I you need to divide everything by two. And then you can I personally would just uh, keep this fourth width to zero and plug it into the third socket. Fourth width is basically means how much fade out uh, of your fourth. It's like generating more numbers between zero and the ones in the results. But the, since we're doing a mask, it's basically a yes no question whether it's zero or whether it's not a zero. So the fourth width will only essentially change a little bit the shape of the sphere but it should not really work very much compared to the size and so on. Anyway, you can try by yourself. And I will keep the, the center at the origin. Next thing I'm going to do is to evaluate fourth. I'm going to take a list and set the type into location. Vector into locations, fourth into fourth. And I'm going to put the strength into mask. So now we can actually take a look with what we actually generated. And if you increase the resolution, you can see we already have our points. So now we can take a output. And we already got our vectors. The next thing that we're going to do is to generate the matrix for this entire setup. So let's simply get a compose matrix. And it's easy just to put our vectors into the translations and then we are going to get the rotations. The reason I don't use the matrix at the beginning is because if you take a look with our matrices, then it's just a grid with only the placement, but they do not uh, imply the rotation of our matrices anyway. So we have to make a rotation completely by our own. It's actually very easy to make. You just take a direction to rotation and put the, these vectors into direction. And they either will evaluate basically everything with the word origin. And the, the Z is the axis of this wall pointing outwards. So, and this is basically that. Then we need to work with the scale. So let's take the point distance fourth and evaluate fourth so that's um, basically closer to the center of the sphere than larger it will be and so on. And let's take the location from the mask. Uh, this is because I would like to make the number 
match. So the scale should match with the, their actual translation. Otherwise, I'm generating more skills by using the original vectors. And it will cause bugs. Next step is we need to change these strengths into the vector value. So simply take a vector form value. This is because the scale contains x, y, z, but now we only has a single value. So basically this is the difference between these two. One is float and the other is a vector. So after finishing this, it's these, and then we need to consider this point distance fourth. This distance fourth is kind of a little bit tricky. Um, so I'm going to put this fourth width into the place. I'm call that a factor width. And then I need to consider this size. Because, uh, as I said earlier, the fourth width essentially is the fade out. So if the fourth width is zero, then we get a very sharp edge of the sphere. But if you try to increase its fourth width, then it will expand outwards and make the outer edge softer. And that's why you need to kind of offset, decrease the size so that it will shrink back. Kind of idea. So in that case, I'm going to basically do everything based on the original size of the sphere. I'm going to take a float mass. This is probably the easiest way that I think. So I put the size of our original sphere, and I'm going to just simply subtract the expansion that we have, and this will essentially solve the issues. I personally think this is the easiest way to achieve the function. And up to this moment, this is basically done. Uh, an, an addition, uh, several things I would like to add is the strength essentially goes from 0 to 1. It basically indicates how close um, your location is to the center of the fall. So the closer it will be, the strength will be higher, but the maximum is 1. But maybe I want our objects to be larger than 1. And the minimal strength should also be larger than 0. So here we're going to make a map range. And I'm going to take the interpolate. So the input do not be changed, but output minimum is something that you can potentially change. So here I'm going to put output minimum, maximum, and the interpolation to the place. And uh, here's a final thing that I did in this case, is I simply put a transform vector and trans for matrix to that. In case if I would like to rotate this entire thing as what you have seen in the demonstration. The good part of these nodes, these two nodes, is that even if you don't input any, uh, let's name that transformation. So even if you don't input any transformation, you're still getting a very perfect output as it should be. So now let's test with our metrics. You can see how it actually looks. So let's decrease the resolution and so on. So now this size is still pretty large. It's because our effector width is not on. So now if we get a fourth width, then the, we generate some softness of this fourth, and you can see it's working. And again, to remind you, the way you change the default value is to hit U. 
and you can change all these default value and hit OK. Another way is if you just hit N and it goes to the nodes and you can do a lot of stuff. And let's name this as a distributes in sphere tutorial. So that if you hit Ctrl A, then you just hit distributes a sphere tutorial. Kind of idea. And for, again, for this transformation, you just compose matrix. And you can try to rotate this entire thing for animation. So I think basically this is it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.